Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if it's your first time. I'm Jada, founder of Unbound Creation. So this may come as a surprise to some of you guys, but our brains actually can't tell the difference between reality and imagination. And likewise, they can't tell the difference between physical and emotional pain. So in that way, we really are kind of stuck in the matrix. Basically a simulation that's been directed and produced by our brains without any input from us. Perceived reality has just as real an effect as objective reality, if there even is such a thing as objective reality. And that effect manifests in our bodies through a process called somatization. See, when we don't like something, our first instinct is to push it away, which is all well and good. It's natural, and it's helped keep us alive and protect us so far. But the thing is, is that even though it might work for some things, it doesn't work for everything, especially not emotions, because our emotions aren't physically dangerous or threatening, quite the opposite. So what are emotions? Because even though we all experience them day in and day out, every second of the day, most, it seems most of us still don't understand them and they tend to confuse us. You can think of emotions as messengers meant to help navigate, us navigate through life. And as such, they're made up of two things and two things only. A message or messages and energy. Like all forms of energy, emotions have to stay in motion, which is why they were called emotions to begin with. When, when everything is working as it should, this doesn't pose a problem and it's actually a really good thing because it ensures that the energy behind the emotions doesn't stay lodged somewhere within our bodies. The problem arises though when we treat our emotions as threats. So your first instinct, smartly, might be to ask, why do we find our emotions to be so threatening? The answer to that lies in our evolution. Like I've said before, we as humans have evolved to focus on the bad. So when there isn't any bad present, and in other words, our basic needs such as food, water, and shelter have all been met, then we go out of our way to fabricate it for ourselves or rather, our minds, our minds do. You see, the mind serves only one purpose, to solve problems. So it gets restless if there aren't any to solve. It needs something to work on and figure out. So therefore, because they can be uncomfortable, a bored, restless mind learns to see emotions as threatening. But emotions aren't meant to be figured out and understood on an intellectual level. That is maladaptive. Don't get me wrong, emotions can be understood on an intellectual level, but instead of helping the situation, it tends to make things a lot worse. And in fact, that's actually a really common trap. People think, well, I know what this emotion is, what it's trying to tell me, and where it's coming from, so why won't it just go away already? <laughs> Why? Well, because the mind is a tool best applied to rational things. So letting it try to help you work out your emotions is like using a saw to assemble a desk. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> the body is the tool to use, not the mind. The body has its own sort of intelligence and it's really useful in helping us process our emotion, emotions and assimilating the messages held within them. What I learned from Michael Singer in his book Untethered Soul is that whenever we resist, suppress, or ignore our emotions, they don't just go away, they stay stuck in our bodies, which since, they, since emotions have to stay in motion, they do so by cycling around themselves. These cycles are known as samskaras in Buddhist traditions. And through personal experience and observation, I've come to see that they physically manifest as knots, 
tension and general dis-ease in our bodies. And while Western science doesn't claim to know what knots are or what causes them, this view of samskaras as knots and tension in our body holds under scientific scrutiny too. Because whenever energy is concentrated in a small area, or in other words, condensed, it's brought from the, phys from the energetic plane to the physical plane. Put simply, it becomes matter. That's what somatization is too. The physical expression of dis-ease in our bodies due purely to a prolonged maladaptive emotional response. Throwing up, throwing up from anxiety, ulcers, nervous tics, inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, having a headache due to stress, and fainting are all symptomatic of somatization. A few weeks ago, I had a sty, which was visible in one of my videos, and that's what gave me the idea to do a little mini-series on somatization. Out of curiosity, I looked up if there was any possible symbolism behind styes, and what I found blew my mind. <laughs> Apparently, styes are a sign that whenever you look at your life, you don't like what you see, and that you need to let go of some things. So like for example, people, perspectives, thoughts, patterns, and habits. This message couldn't be any more appropriate to what I was experiencing in my life at that time. Even my body was telling me to surrender. In the end, somatization is proof that there is an undeniable link between the mind, body, and emotions. And this video only scratched the surface, so if this interested you, then tune back in next week because I'm going to be talking a bit more on somatization. But as for right now, thank you guys so much for watching. I feel so honored to be able to share my thoughts with you guys. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if any part of what I said resonated with you, then please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing the video so that it can reach more people. Also, don't forget to comment down below if you think you've experienced any form of somatization. One of the reasons I wanted to start doing YouTube was to create and hold the space where we could have conversations about topics like this and where we could learn, share, and connect with each other. I look forward to reading what you guys have to say and thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Oh. <laughs>